by a show of hands, how many of you guys watched Game 7 of the World Series last night? Just three, wow, okay. Do we have any Dodgers fans in here? Zero, wow. <laughs> Not expect that in California. Any Astros? <laughs> that was more expected. Now, um, maybe you didn't watch Game 7, but did any of you guys watch any of the World Series games? A, lot, a little more, a little more, that's better. Um, well, I'm terribly sorry to you Dodgers fans. I mean, it was a really great game, you have to admit. But aside from the score, the game was very entertaining to watch, especially for me, because I'm not a big fan of either of these teams, so I could just sit back and enjoy the game. I'm a Mariners fan, and unfortunately, the Mariners really suck. Uh, they haven't been good for a very long time. The last time the Mariners had a playoff run, SpongeBob was created. So, I have a good... Uh, I have a really big appreciation for the game. Both Jim and I played for a very long time. I played from as early as I can remember up until just a couple months ago. And I have a very, very proficient understanding of the game and especially of the World Series. Last night's game concluded the 113th World Series. That's compared to 51 Super Bowls and 70 NBA Finals. So baseball has been around for so much longer. Throughout this speech, I want all of you to get a more in-depth background of the World Series and how it represents far more than just a set of games, but our nation's history, each team's driving factors, and finally, the history that was just made last night. So our purpose is to teach all of you um, the history of the World Series, informing what's currently happening in baseball. And for those of you who did not watch it, it's my personal goal to get you to either watch any of the games for next year and give you a more developed understanding of the sport. So I want to start with a short story. Um, I'm going to incorporate ideas from Major League Baseball's World Series Center and from SBN Studios. So back in 1903, the National League's top tier team was the Pittsburgh Pirates. They were dominating their league and then recently the newly developed American League came along and their dominating team was the Boston Americans. Now, they're known as the Boston Red Sox now, but that was a long time ago. The Pittsburgh Pirates challenged the Boston Americans to an 11-game series for baseball supremacy. Now, the two teams met and discussed, and at that time, 11 games seemed quite ridiculous. Now, and then they agreed upon a nine-game series instead, which today is still quite ridiculous and very long. So we just stick with seven. From October 1st through October 16th, the two teams battled back and forth. Each roster was lined up with superstars like Honus Wagner <coughs> from the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was a gold glove shortstop and batting legend. And then the Boston Americans had their ace pitcher, Cy Young, who is one of the best, if not the best, pitchers of all time. Today, in baseball, the best pitcher award for the season is called the Cy Young Award. Both teams competed for eight straight games over the course of 13 days. By game eight, the Boston Americans were winning the series four to three, and needed one more victory to secure their title. In the bottom of the ninth, the Pirates were down, and their superstar, Honus Wagner, came up with two outs, um, and he struck out to end the game. This gave the Boston Americans a series win, and they won their first World Series. But what may seem to you guys as a simple baseball game back in the 1900s, it was a thousand times more than that. This was a series that pushed the game of baseball to what we all know it as today. The World Series is a championship, series of championship games that represent our pastimes. They're as traditional as Thanksgiving, the 4th of July, and for some, they're as anticipated as Christmas morning. That's including myself. According to Ira Burko, from the New York Times, she says that wars couldn't stop the Major League Baseball, the Depression couldn't stop the Major League Baseball. As it seems, the only thing that could is Major League Baseball itself. Baseball has been branded into American culture, and liking it is considered patriotic. Baseball is what people think back to from their moments of happiness and content. It's what makes up your childhood memories. For me personally, I play baseball all my life. When I think back to baseball, back to my childhood, I think back to the summers where I played Little League and select baseball. And it helps me just distract myself
from, it was a time where I didn't have to worry about schoolwork, essays, especially speeches. Roger Angel, a writer for the New York Magazine, states that baseball is part of my summer habits and maybe even my winter habits. There's a continuity with baseball and there's a feeling of loss without it. Like there goes something else in our lives. Regular season games have a long-lasting impact on Americans and people like Hira and Roger. Now imagine that passion. I want you guys to imagine that passion, but now amplify it. That's what the World Series is like. For those of you, baseball is a basic game with balls and sticks. Let me run you through some statistics. For a pitch that comes at you at 90 miles an hour, the batter has 9 one hundredths of a second to decide whether or not they're going to swing. That's according to John Brankis of Sports Science. So you can imagine the difficulty in just making contact with the ball. Just last year, in the 2016 World Series between the Cleveland Indians and the Chicago Cubs, it was a game for the record books. In Game 7, the Cubs defeated the Indians 8-7 in 10 innings to win the series 4-3. Finally, winning a World Series after 108 years was very impressive. Perhaps the most iconic moment happened in the 8th inning. Aroldis Chapman was the flame-growing closer for the Cubs, he came in with a two-run lead, one run on base, and two outs. The Indian center fielder Rajay Davis comes up to the plate, who's known for his speed and not power, comes through, sees seven straight fastballs ranging between 98 and 105 miles an hour. Davis crushed the seventh pitch to allow the Indians to tie it and go to extra innings later on. Chapman threw a 98.2 mile an hour pitch with a 2,397 spin rate per minute. With that velocity, Rajay Davis had to react upon the release of the ball in order to, to decide whether to swing or not, and then make contact, and then have an acceptable launch angle. It's the details like these that show how difficult and exciting a World Series can really be. All right. This year's World Series has been record-breaking, or should I say bat-breaking. <laughs> the Dodgers and the Houston Astros played a brand of baseball that didn't exist three years ago, according to Tom Murphy Kikuchi of Sports Illustrated. As you all know, the LA Dodgers played the Houston Astros last night and for a couple of weeks for the World Series. Houston recently went through Hurricane Harvey, a detrimental um, weather, weather um, catastrophe causing the whole city of Houston to be in, in shambles. T-Mobile decided to create the movement Home Runs for um, Hurricane Relief, which is basically every time that someone hit a home run, $20,000 would be donated to the cause of uh, Hurricane Relief in Houston. So, as you can tell, like if you watched the World Series, you would know that a lot of money was donated to Houston because of all of the, because of all of the home runs. So let's start the story where it began. Let's start about to talk about the World Series. So in game one, pitcher Clayton Kershaw of L.A., for it faced off against Dallas Keuchel of the Astros. This was the 113th World Series played, and um, Christian Taylor of the LA, um, LA Dodgers hit a home run in the first pitch of the game. This kind of set a tone for the World Series. It basically showed everyone that, okay, these guys are here to play, and they've got their bats, and they're hot. The Dodgers end up winning the game 3-1, to one, so let's go to game two. Still in LA. Rich Hill was pitching for LA, and Justin Verlander pitched for the Astros. The game was tied 3-3 to all the way to the ninth. Not too exciting, as I might add, but in the tenth, top of the tenth, the Astros go up two runs to make it 5-3. to The Dodgers answer back, making 5-5 to with another double home run. Basically, two runs, someone's on base, and they hit a home run. Bottom of the, bottom, top of the eleventh, Jordan Springer of Houston hits a two-run home run to right field. This allows Houston to take the lead, two runs up, and they can clutch up in the bottom of the eleventh causing them to win the game. Game three, we're moving over to Houston. Pitcher Hugh Darvish pitches for LA versus uh, Lance McCullers of Houston. Houston goes up four runs in the second inning off a single rally. Single rally meaning that they got a lot of singles in a row making four runs total. Dodgers score one, one run and when bases were loaded and the uh, Houston basically, Houston basically clutched up there because they're basically loaded. Dodgers score another two so the game is tied, or the game is at five to three and Houston takes it all the way. For the, it wasn't that interesting. Houston takes it all the way anyway. Now to game four. Next day in Houston. Pitcher Alex Wood of LA uh, goes up against Charlie Morton of Houston. It's a pitcher shut out to the sixth, and it's extremely interesting because Alex Wood broke the record of the longest no-hitter in Dodgers World Series history. 
But interestingly enough, in the seventh inning, the Astros hit a home run off of him after he has a no-hitter going on. So that kind of ruined his day. John Pedersen then hits a three-run home run for LA, rallying his team to be uh, win by five home runs. Now let's travel back to Los Angeles for game five. Pitcher Clayton Kershaw for LA faces up against Keiko of the Astros. This is by far the best game in the series and honestly probably the best baseball game I've ever watched. Dodgers score three runs in the first inning, which is pretty, is pretty uncommon. Then they add another run in the, four, or in the second inning, so making it four runs to zero. The Astros answer back in the fourth inning, basically hitting two um, two 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 run home runs, making it four to four in the fourth. The Dodgers then answer back with a three run home run in the fifth by Cody Bellinger. Fast forward a couple home runs to the uh, the ninth inning, and it's twelve to nine or twelve to eleven. Puig of LA hits a two run homer to make it twelve to eleven, and then Chris Taylor of LA hits another home run to make it twelve to twelve. And this is at the bottom of the ninth. Then in extra innings, top of the tenth, Alex Bregham, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Hits a walk-off RBI for Houston to win the game. And I can tell you right now, I was in a room with some Houston fans, and it was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> they were going nuts. Alright. Now back to games, now to game six, after the most exciting game of the series, debatably. This is a must-win game for the Dodgers. Pitching is Hill versus Verlander on Houston. Verlander lost Verlander has not lost a game on the Astros because he was traded during the postseason. So he's 9-0 and up, up to this point as a starter for, for the Astros. But at this game, he loses. They fall 3-1. to one. It's a pretty boring game, to be honest. But Verlander's story kind of sucked. So I just wanted to put it out there. Now finally, we head to Los Angeles. It's 3-3, three three, series tied. Pitching is Yao Darvish for LA versus Lance McCuller of the Astros. This, is, this would be the Dodgers' seventh World Series title, and this would be Houston's first championship ever. They've never been to the World Series. Dodger Stadium is filled with 54,000 people, packed full, of the, packed full to the brim. Everyone in there is going nuts. First inning, Houston comes out and ruins the Dodgers' day. Two runs right away, all RBIs. Second inning, another two, three runs. One by an RBI by the pitcher, Lance McCullen. McCuller, he RBIs a uh, runner in. And George Springer, who you've heard about a little bit earlier, hits another two-run homer and ruins the night for uh, the Dodgers fans. Puts them in a little depression. George Springer is currently the MVP frontrunner for this World Series due to his five-home run hot streak this week, according to New York Times by David Walstein. According to uh, Sports Nation by Tim Cato. In a postseason that has shattered home run records, we just saw more history made this time by George Springer with his two-run homer in the second inning of the game seven. Not all too common by Tim Caddo as well. George Springer, I know I've said him a couple times. You've probably heard him a couple times in the speech. His name mostly only comes up with home runs. And he actually had five home runs in seven games, which is pretty impressive. It's only been done by two other people in the World Series. And so he's, he's a legend for that. So all in all, Astros win the World Series, as you all probably know. So I hope you enjoyed a little bit of hearing about some of the highlights. So in conclusion, in this franchise's 56th season, the, Ast the Houston Astros are finally champions, according to New York Times by David Walston. The series will be an all-time classic, I'm sure of it. I'm sure I'll, we'll be talking to our kids, if you watched it, about that we were there for the Houston Astros Dodgers World Series. And when they'll ask, what was it like? And we're like, we weren't there, but we saw it. So due to the offense of the series, Timo was actually able to raise $2.5 million for the Hurricane Harvey, Harvey relief due to the home runs hit and the hashtag HR for HR, which is hurricane, or home runs for Hurricane Harvey, which means you just put that on Twitter and you, $2 is donated. So they raised that, that much money, which doubled the previous amount. So it was pretty insane. And the Astros completed their quest for their first World Series. And they did it with their battered city, Houston, in the back of their minds. They did it for them. At the end of the series, the Willie Mays MVP award was awarded to George Springer. According to George Springer, the city of Houston inspired us for the World Series run. He batted up a 3.79 or 37% chance to get on base with eight extra base hits, meaning a double or a triple, throughout the series, according to Benjamin Hawk. So I hope you all enjoyed hearing a little bit of the World Series, and I hope that I could have, was able to show a little bit about the history of baseball, the World Series, and our country's national pastime. Thank you. We'll give you guys feedback next time because we're way over class.